Ladies and gentlemen, you might wonder what an old engineering projects guy is doing telling you about some screen thing that he neither sells nor owns. Well, I love a good technical success story. This one's a beauty. There's some useful hard one knowledge in here that uh, I expect you'll love it too. Very handy, this one also makes the bean counters happy. Two mesh, two mesh screens have been around for a while, uh, but haven't seen much uptake in the coal industry. Mostly because coal people love cheap, and that's not where these things are at. A technical success story is always a journey, and this one started for us in 2012. A West Australian mineral stand startup mine wanted a fully mobile 3,500 tonnes per hour dozer track to screen at minus two millimetres in the middle of a desert, plus pump at a few kilometres. Who does that? Just sharing the story here. I mean, even ask a question like that. Screen three and a half thousand tonnes per hour at minus two millimetres, that's 100% passing too, by the way, in a desert. Short story, we found out about two mass screens. So we're just an engineering design construct project company, basically. Uh, and the one particular OEM had a mature product that could do this job really well. Yep, three and a half thousand tonne there in the desert, and, and we knew how to make it all work. But the DNA of our company is solidly in coal. Uh, whilst the dose trap distraction was very interesting, and a little bit more on that journey later, uh, we expected the real dividends from two mass screens were to be had in coal, and they are. So, let's start with a quick refresher on banana screens to show where the potential for improvement comes from. Here's a 3.6 metre wide drain and rinse screen at minus 1.4 millimetres in coal, being overloaded with 600 tonnes per hour of rejects, densities around 1.3 or just over. There's a couple of standard excitors driving the whole machine to vibrate uh, using brute force, and they get away with it in this process just. Look at how fast the material is sliding at the end of the drain zone. Think about how little screening is actually being done there as the material scoots past. Uh, more relevant to the sliming, but still a factor here. With the speed of material, draining is barely complete before it enters the rinse zone, and it's wearing decks out at a phenomenal rate. Six weeks service life if you're lucky, four weeks more typical. In the rinse zone, things have slowed down a lot. The material gets hit by a solid wall of water twice and uses weir bars to ensure that water is not discharged. Depending on feed, discharge is not always as even as you see here. So, What's going to happen if we put another 30 or 40 percent over a screen that's already clearly struggling? Surely we'll bury it, you might think. But picture a slightly faster terminal speed and only slightly higher bed depth at the discharge point, and it's really no big deal to do that. A magnetite loss should be below 0.4 kilograms per tonne, but really reaching that for this screen. We all know tonnes out the gate trumps magnetite loss every time, and you can't have your cake and eat it too. We'll, we'll be seeing about that. This is a typical banana screen. It regularly needs crack repairs, as do most large banana screens, since they're putting a concentrated force down the sidewalls to activate the thick discharge bed. That never ends well. The screen is the bottleneck here, not the chute. So let's have a look at what two mass screens can do about all of this. Slide finishes. I've obviously got ahead of myself, but I've learned to speak more slowly. Here is the same minus 1.4 millimetre drain and rinse coal application, but now a two mass screen with 800 tonnes per hour plus hitting that impact zone. Material slows down immediately in the drain zone. It goes over one metre long minus 16 millimetre cascade deck with draining all finished in the first metre and the bed well stratified for rinse zone entry. The rinse zone has an iron row water coat curtain to continuously rinse material during the extended period there. Uh, no weed bars needed at the discharge, uh, deck life is three months minimum. Magnetite loss is negligible, so a pretty good outcome, eh? As you can see, the discharge chute is now quite full, but easily coped with extra throughput. So, now that you've got an idea of what's possible in coal, let's have a look at a few of these screens in the flesh. Two mass screens have been used around the world for decades, typically in hard rock and iron ore applications because they're so strong. Also used as retrofits when pushing production rates to replace cheaper but failing banana screens. A lesson no bean counter likes seeing our inner cheapskates learn, but it keeps happening. Fourth generation two mass screens have been around since 2008. You've seen a few of these well proven screens displayed now, but whilst they may all look similar, they can be tuned for speed, bed depth, tonnage, and high efficiency. But that's another conversation. Here are two mass um, screens in dry coal in India. The gentleman in yellow is supposed to be in the audience, 
the user, if you want to know more about that one later, we'll do some when you can talk to. It's only one of these fourth generation screens, that's not me, have been installed in Australia in the last five years, over 150 around the world, hundreds more of earlier versions. So here's a few short videos with some two mass screens in action. Various combinations of screening parameters are going on here. Every screen is customised to get the best results for each specific application. As you can see, this one's about ensuring maximum screening efficiency. Oh, that was the one just before this one. <laughs> uh, that's a highly activated bed. You can be sure all the minus 0.5 millimetre material is left by the time it gets to this charge. This one's 2.6 metre wide or 8.6 metre long copper mill. That's 2,700 tonnes per hour. Imagine taking that another slot wider uh, for 6.6 .6 wide by 10 metres long, uh, which is now available in a three slot design. Uh, which is like that you just saw, but it's actually bigger than this stage. It's pretty much two-thirds of that front section of seating in, in the centre. They're, they're pretty big things. So let's get the nuts and bolts of how two mass screens actually work. A banana screen has to accelerate the whole screen body, but a two mass only the lower trough section. The most important thing going on here is that these screens have a constant bed depth down the entire length and material stays on the deck for more than double the time. Due to some helpful physics, uh, as load increases, stroke increases, uh, making for very high screen efficiency. And they don't stall under load. And only need half the power of a banana screen, or less. For coal, being relatively light, a 16mm 3N cascade deck ensures excellent bed stratification to use all that extra screening time. And they do it more quietly. Even the applied loading means very low structural stress, so they don't break, which is actually pretty amazing when you're trying to pump uh, throughput out of um, culprit plants. The bottom line is they're a quality replacement that can easily handle at least 30% more throughput for the same or better product quality, they're easy to live with and lower cost per tonne. So let's have a look at that installation that the opening video has got taken at. This Queensland coal coking mine uh, was campaign running stockpiled rejects to make thermal coal. The reject screen is often a bottleneck. They considered an expensive 4.2 metre wide banana screen upgrade, but went with a much cheaper retrofit of a 3.6 metre wide two mass screen that does 800 tonnes per hour and bolted directly to the existing banana screen support pedestals. The way these screens are built is pretty useful. They're fully shop tested and tuned, then dismantled for modular transport and reassembled in a nearby workshop or on site for tight access installs. An adjustable rib zone extension gets maximum benefit from the continuous curtain easy maintenance spray system. Here's a couple of overlays to show how even this worst case reverse feeding chute configuration was accommodated, with only top access walkway and piping walks needed. <coughs> what Mum especially loves about this is how quiet the screen is, that the deck panels get more than triple the life, how it starts and stops with none of the resonant wobbling you get with banana screens, it's easy and safe to work on, plus fantastic support from the OEM. So, let's have a look how it all went. Here's a chart of a week of operation at one minute intervals, often running well above the 800 tonne per hour screen rating. With wildly varying feed, the excited motors respond, so trough vibration is unaffected. Notice how steady the trough accelerometers are. This is an extraordinary feature. If you load them up, they get excited more, so they retain screening efficiency and they don't bog down. You know, if you run screens, you know, it's pretty amazing. The old screen had two 22 kilowatt motors running flat outs. Now we have two 9.3 kilowatt motors, rated 25.8 amps full load, yet they never even spike above uh, 20 amps. They're having a pretty cruisy life doing this bigger job. On the two mass screen, a magnet wand always comes up pretty clear. So nobody wants to do more testing, despite my fervent desire to see some real numbers on that stuff. So what would happen if we took these kind of results and applied them to an existing prep plant that are quite typically seen in Australia? If I create a whole mine to a 15 million tonnes per annum of ROM, or 10 to 12 million tonnes per annum of product, the cost from the ROM hopper down is US 3 or 50 per tonne of annual ROM capacity. So about 50 million US to get the job done. And you get that all back in under nine months. Of course, it also costs money to mine the additional 15 million tonnes per annum, uh, but more than covered by high realisable uh, profit per tonne. Um, that's actually a real site, and if the market out continues to, to uh, firm, it could easily happen. But I'm not going to jump to the next slide now. Uh, I've realised, looking at some of the other presentations here, that this is a much more important slide than it seemed to be when I was sitting at my desk preparing this uh, presentation. 
Because what's going on here, <coughs> is these are 400 tons per square module now. This is a 40 year old or more site. Uh, it was originally done with uh, flatbed screens and zip ends and about 250 tons per hour. Uh, and now they've done, uh, in fact, banana screens originally developed at this actual site in combination with one of the man manufacturers and a, and a guy who's our uh, principal process engineer uh, was very much involved in doing it. This is a coincidence of circumstances of life more than anything else. The important point is, this is a 40 year old plant, and you guys got them out there. Um, they've taken it from 250 to 400. <laughs> Uh, just by going to banana streets, and we're talking about taking it to 650 by putting these two mass screens in. Now, that, this particular site hasn't been upgraded, and it probably won't be in the short term because of an ownership change, uh, and that uh, you would only do this type of thing if you need more capacity and you have the methodology to do it. But I I've, I've particularly was impressed with uh, looking at what the Chinese have uh, been doing, and that one of the uh, slides there mentioned uh, 12 million tonnes per annum as a, a fairly large site and 35 as we're you know, brand new, everything, all singing, all dancing. And we're talk, talking about getting an old site for 29. You know, it's because it's wrong. We're always measuring wrong, not a product at the gate, because that's a batch of um, the actual uh, material you're digging up or anything else. So uh, this is... Uh, a desktop study in effect, and you can get the document on their website that explains a bit more about it. But there just might be a story here that's actually really important for a lot, a lot of people, a lot more beyond just understanding this, the uh, possibility of using a two mass screen to you know, get higher throughput. It's just, you, know, you don't really have to build all new singing and dancing stuff, you just configure them a bit, um, a bit uh, differently. We can talk about that. So back to the presentation. So this is um, going to it. Uh, so, so a quick look about what's coming next. Fourth generation screens have been around for over 10 years, um, and that was mostly about modularising the design when they came out. Fifth generation units are in production now. The developments like that quick change spring system uh, simplify maintenance even further. And size. You know, we mentioned the uh, larger screens that are uh, coming. That's 5.4 by 8.5 screens being built now, which is pretty impressive. 6.6 by 10s are coming, and what the OEM tells me is as soon as someone's got a process, we'll build them that needs them. Three different streams per screen is a great example of applying new world thinking. I need to stay on message. Here is a chart of two mass screens available now. Single decks to 5.4 metres wide and doubles to 3.6. New prep plants with fully automated 900 tonne per hour modules are easy to do, but as you know, new prep plant operating opportunities in Australia keep evaporating. A stack of reasons there and a stack of interesting politics. Anyone wanting to have a serious chat about what could be done in India or elsewhere, please do. In the meantime, let's have a look at some two mesh screen retrofit action from that Queensland site. Back to the videos. They ship their modules from China or USA, assembled locally, and test run for 20 hours. Here's that Bowen screen demonstrating how little transmitted vibration occurs. Whilst the excited mass is less than the trough, uh, it has about double the stroke, so they largely cancel each other out. You wouldn't get a coin to balance like that on a similar size banana screen, or any, really, and it's not even bolted down as you saw. We replaced this screen by going through the side wall, which was much easier than clearing equipment out above to go through the roof. The process is called monkey swing, for obvious reasons. It actually went very well. So whilst that in uh, installation was an interesting journey milestone, let's wrap up by touching base with how it all began. That WA mining startup had a journey of their own. <laughs> Seven years on, the mine plan has changed, and short story, next year we were expecting to start building 2,000 tonnes per hour dozer traps, complete with one megawatt uh, our surrey pumps, uh, used with a hopper by excavator for overburden removal, or no hopper by dozer for mineral transport. These preliminary progress pictures give a general idea about the exciting times ahead. This will be a story for another day as we've developed a derivative system for blending steaming coals and stockpile management. I hope you've enjoyed coming on this part of the journey with me today. I thank you for your interest.